So it turns out that not every subset of the natural numbers has a supremum because unfortunately there's no infinity. But let's see what happens when we just decide to add the element infinity to our natural numbers set. What happens then? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at that. And what's gonna be really interesting as a result of this video is we're gonna show that every subset every subset of this unique natural number set with infinity has a supremum inside this special set. All right, so let's start by showing that this special set is an ordered set. So what does that mean? Well, first, that means I can compare any two elements in this set. So meaning if I take two elements, then either one is bigger than the other or they're the same but one of those has to be true. Specifically, exactly one of those has to be true. We also need to show that the transitive property holds. That is, if A is less than B and B is less than C, then A is less than C. So let's first start off by listing off our hypotheses for this proof. Okay, so we're gonna be doing a direct proof. So let this special set N infinity equal the natural numbers union the element infinity, where elements of n are ordered in the usual way amongst themselves, and k is less than the element infinity for every k that's a natural number. Now, I really want to stress something in this proof here. This is what we're defining infinity to be. Infinity here is a label for a special element in this set. I don't want you to confuse all of your previous conceptions about infinity, especially if you think you want to talk about countable infinity versus uncountable infinity or any of those other infinities out there that are strange and creepy. That's not what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with specifically a very unique object. And this object has a special property that it's bigger than all of the other objects. So if you want to think about what the visual representation of the set looks like, we have an ordered field F right here, and then a random element infinity, which is kind of like off the chart here. And infinity has this property where if you compare infinity with any of these elements, infinity is always bigger, always, always, always bigger. So that's just the unique property about this element. Is that what infinity is? No. No, if you want to know what infinity is, I highly recommend just pulling up a Wikipedia page and going on YouTube and just searching all the different videos. You'll find some unique stuff. Okay, so we need to show that this special set and infinity is an ordered set. So we're going to pick two elements in this set. Now, there are four cases here, but really there are three. I'm going to boil it down to three, and two of them are really easy to work out, in my opinion. So case one is that A equals infinity equals B, that they're both infinity. Well, if this is the case, then A equals B, and that's it. And so that's good. We get exactly one of A equals B, or A is less than B, or A is greater than B. We got A equals B in this case. So we got exactly one result. That's all I need. Case two is if A is a natural number and B is infinity. Well, then A is less than B since B is infinity and infinity is greater than every element that's a natural number. And so we get exactly A is less than B and nothing else. We don't get both A equals B and A is less than B. We get exactly one result. Okay, case three is gonna be when A equals infinity and B is a natural number. Well, in this case, we get A is greater than B since A is infinity. And infinity is larger than every natural number, according to the definition. And so I get exactly one result. That's good. And case four, A and B are both natural numbers. Well, since the natural numbers in this specific context are ordered in the traditional sense, 
Well, the natural numbers are totally ordered. And so either A equals B, A is less than B, or B is less than A, which is what we were sh trying to show. Exactly one of those is true. That's good. So in either one of these four cases, exactly A is less than B, or A equals B, or A is greater than B. One of those has to be true. Exactly one of those. All right, so next, let's show that the transitive property holds. So now let's grab an extra element C from this set. So let's pick three elements in my set at infinity, where X is less than Y and Y is less than Z. My goal is to show that X is less than Z. Well, first I wanna show that X and Y both cannot be infinity. So let's start with Y. And you can start with X if you want, but it will be a little bit more efficient if you just show that Y is infinity. You'll, make, you'll be able to make a shortcut if you do. So assume Y equals infinity. We're gonna get a contradiction here. So that means that Y is less than Z implies that infinity is less than Z. So we have an element in an infinity that is greater than infinity. But that's impossible. No element can do this. So this is a contradiction. So this implies that Y cannot be infinity. Similarly, X cannot be infinity. Why is that? Well, if X was infinity, then you would have Y is greater than X. And you would have the same problem that you did here. Okay, so then that boils down what we're looking at here when we have x is less than y and y is less than z. For one, I know that both x and y are not infinity, which means that x and y are natural numbers. And then z might be a natural number too, which could be really useful. And it might not be a natural number, and that's okay too. So let's work through those cases. Case one z is infinity well then right off the bat well since x is not infinity that means that x is a natural number which means that x is less than infinity by the definition of infinity which means that x is less than z which is what we're trying to show here we're trying to show that x is less than z that's the goal okay good that's what we wanted to show so let's work out the other case. So case two is Z is a natural number. And so that means that X, Y, and Z are all natural numbers. So since X is less than Y and Y is less than Z, then X is less than Z. Why is that? Why do I, this looks like circular reasoning, right? Well, no, because we're working in the natural numbers right now. So in the natural numbers, we're working with the typical ordering. And so the transitive property holds for the natural numbers. I know that none of these elements are infinity, and so I can actually do this. So no matter what, x is less than z. And so that proves what we're trying to show. That n infinity here is ordered. And specifically, we're working with a total ordering. Now, the second part of this problem is really interesting, which says that every single subset of this special n infinity set here has a supremum in n infinity and make sure to handle the case of an empty set. So let's handle the case of the empty set first. What's the supremum of the empty set according to this total ordering of n infinity? Well, the supremum is an upper bound to the empty set. Specifically, it's the least upper bound. So what are some empty bounds to the empty set? Well, technically every element is an upper bound to the empty set because for every element in my empty set, that element is less than or equal to y, where y is in n infinity. 
And so every element in n infinity here is an upper bound. So then what's the least upper bound? Well, I claim the least upper bound is 1. Now, just to remind everyone, in this specific textbook, 0 is not a natural number. If you have a problem with that, I'll see you in the comment section. So why is this the case? Well, if I have an element in an infinity here, then a is a natural number or a is infinity. If a is a natural number, then 1 is less than or equal to a since 1 is the smallest natural number. If a equals infinity, then 1 is less than or equal to a since 1 is less than infinity. Infinity is greater than every natural number, according to the definition here. So either way, 1 is going to be less than or equal to whatever arbitrary element I pick in the n infinity set. So that means 1 is not just any unique upper bound to my empty set. 1 is the least upper bound to the empty set. So that's the empty set. Now let's work out what happens if we pick a non-empty subset of n infinity. So let E be a subset of n infinity, be non-empty. Now there are two cases. Case one is where infinity is in E. In this case, the supremum of E is infinity because infinity is the only upper bound of E. And so because it's the only upper bound of E, then it's definitely the least upper bound of E. And then with case two, infinity is not in E, which means that E only contains natural numbers. Well, that's pretty convenient because now I can address what the supremum of E is pretty easily based on the size of E. So we're going to do a little subcase here, case sub I, the size of E is finite. Well, then I have a finite, totally ordered set that's non-empty. And so we've shown in previous videos that these sets contain their supremum, which is a subset of the natural numbers, which is a subset of an infinity. And so that means that the supremum of E exists and is inside of our set here, an infinity. That was case I, let's look at case II. So this is the case where E is countably infinite. Well, if this is the case, let E be an element of E, then E is less than infinity because that's the definition of infinity. Infinity is greater than every natural number and E is inside the natural numbers here, according to this case too. So since E was an arbitrary element, this means that infinity is an upper bound to E. Now we're almost done. We need to show that infinity is the only upper bound to E, but how do we show that? Well, let's suppose we have an upper bound, u, which is a natural number. Well, this would be incredibly problematic because e in this specific case is countably infinite. And so somehow I'm working with a countably infinite set that has an upper bound. And so I have one, which is less than two, which is less than three, which is less than and so on, all the way up to this upper bound u here. And somehow I have a countably infinite set here. No, that's definitely a contradiction. That's definitely not true. And so the assumption that's wrong is where I have 
an upper bound, that's a natural number. No, I don't. And so this means that infinity is the only upper bound of E. And that means that the supremum of E is infinity, which is contained in an infinity. And so E has a supremum, and that supremum is inside an infinity. And so either way, the supremum is in an infinity, including this supremum in case one. Infinity is in an infinity. And so no matter what, every subset I pick from an infinity has a supremum in an infinity. And we work the case off with the empty set. The supremum of the empty set is one. Wow, I love this problem. This is fun. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you all in the next video.